Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we explore the topics of men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now here on the channel, if you've been here for any length of time, you'll know that we spend a lot of time talking about men's footwear because it's quite an important component of the way that you dress and the image that you present to people that you meet for the first time. Because, you know, you can be assured that if you meet somebody and you've got dirty and unkempt footwear, that's what's going to draw the eye and that's the impression that these new friends of yours are going to have as they walk away. You are the dirty shoe guy. So you don't want to do that. And I always recommend to people that when it comes to footwear, it is so important that you need to spend as much as is reasonably possible on your shoes because they're going to be around for a long time. You know, if you invest wisely, you can be wearing those pair of shoes for a couple of decades. Also, you know, it's such an important component when it comes to making that first impression. It's worth investing some money in it. There's an old adage which says you should spend as much on your shoes as you do on your suit. So if you're standing there in a suit which costs £500 and you've only spent £50 on your shoes, you've got part of the equation wrong. The shoes are such an important part, but you don't have to break the bank to have good quality footwear. And one such example is a brand which I've been wearing for well over 20 years now, and that's Loke. Now, it's a British heritage brand. It's been around for a long time. We'll talk about its history when we have a look at the shoes. And I've reviewed a few pairs of their products here, boots and shoes. But today, well, for the last three months, I've been wearing a pair of their Loke Birkdale Brogues. It's from their uh, 1880 collection, so their highest uh, level of footwear. And I found them to be a pretty good buy and at a very good price. So I'm going to flip the camera around. We'll have a look what I've got. And perhaps I can talk you into trying a pair of Loke shoes. Okay, so here are the stars of today's show, and this is a pair of Loke Birktail Brogues. We'll get into more of the specifics about these shoes in a moment, but to start off, why don't we just have a quick, swift history refresher about the Loke brand itself, because I really like to know more about the companies and the heritage and the, the origin story of the products that come into my life. Now, Loke as a company has been around since 1880. Um, and it's a family company. It remains in family ownership today, all of these decades and decades later. Uh, and it was started off up in Kettering in Northamptonshire. Now, anybody who knows about the footwear industry will know that Northamptonshire is kind of the, the epicentre of the British uh, shoe manufacturing industry. It remains so today, and Lokes Factory is still up there in Kettering. And it was founded in 1880 by two brothers, Thomas and William Loke, who started off a company which remains in, I think it's fifth or sixth generation family ownership today. And, uh, you know, doing rather well. Now, they specialise in traditionally crafted Goodyear welted shoes and boots uh, and have done so and for, you know, since 1880. And to this day, they still have a fabulous reputation of providing a good quality shoe at, I would argue, a very modest price. Um, they have a rich history when it comes to stepping up when the country needs them. You know, in the First and Second World War, they manufactured footwear for soldiers, sailors and airmen who were on the front line. I think they even manufactured boots for the Cossacks in the Russian military forces. So their sort of heritage on that front is, you know, somewhat unrivaled, really, in, in all honesty. Um, they hold the Royal Warrant and they have held that since 2007. Holding a royal warrant for those who are uninitiated means that they are uh, official providers of footwear to the royal household. So I doubt the Queen actually wears uh, Loke boots or shoes, but it means that perhaps those who are in her employment, footmen, um, you know, gardeners, all of those sort of people who support the royal family, they are wearers of Loke, hence the royal warrant. And they have a number of boutiques around the, the world now, actually. I've seen them 
uh, in mainland Europe as well as in, in England and Wales and Scotland and Ireland. Uh, but they'll often be found in department shoe, shoe departments. You'll also find them, uh, you know, in standalone boutiques. They've got a great one on German Street in London. If you ever find that, find yourself in that sort of mecca for men's apparel. Uh, but also, as I say, you know, you'll find them in various other parts of department stores and so on. Um, but they also have a fantastic website, and I've actually purchased boots and shoes from Loke's website over time. And you know you get a fantastic service. They're delivered immediately in great st in great quality and so on. Now, when it comes to Loke, it's important to know that not all shoes are created equally. Now, these Birkdale brogues that we see here today, they come from the Loke 1880 range, and that is really important because in the Loke world, um, they manufacture the top end of their shoes, the 1880 range. In England, that means you know you get the highest quality of heritage manufacture in Northamptonshire, where there is this centuries-long heritage of artisans and crafts men and women who make these shoes. So great skill set there. Now, some years ago, in sort of response to the global trend towards it, look. Uh, about two thirds of their manufacturing takes place overseas, so in India, uh, but the very highest end of their products are still manufactured in the UK, giving you a bit of confidence in the quality, I would suggest. Although I'm not casting any aspersions over the Indian craftsmen who make the shoes there, but I feel more comfortable about buying shoes that have been made within the heritage uh, sort of traditional manner up in Northamptonshire, personally, is part of my enjoyment of the brand to think that. So if you're looking at Loke shoes, be aware that the lower level of Loke shoes, and they are called, they have a brand called L1, they have a brand called Loke Lifestyle, they have a brand called Design Loke, and they have another brand called Loke Shoemakers, which I do believe are manufactured in the UK. But the 1880 is where I recommend you start off at if you're going to buy a pair of Loke shoes. Now, this Loke pair of uh, Birkdale brogues, as you can see, it's kind of a traditional brogue, and it is a Derby brogue. Now, to explain what Derby means, I'll just, in fact, I will just remove this one and bring in another Loke shoe. Now, this is a Loke Cadogan shoe, and the difference is that this is an Oxford style shoe. Now, people often throw these terms of Oxfords and Derbys around without actually giving much explanation for it. Now, I'll show you the Derby to start with. You will note that on the Derby shoe, if you look where the lacing system is, it's the laces go into a flap, which is you know, definitively separate to the main body of the shoe. That flap sits proud, the, 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 the tongue of the shoe goes inside it, and it is separate to the main body of the shoe. Now, if we look at a Oxford style shoe on this Loke Cadogan, uh, it's a quarter brogue, as you can see, a little bit of broguing around the cap toe. You will see that the lacing system forms part of the integrity of the whole body of the shoe. Now, that is an Oxford style lacing system opposed to the Derby style system, which we see on the Birkdale. So I'll bring the other one back in. And there we go. So now you understand the difference between Derby and Oxford. So the Birkdale is a traditional Derby shoe, features a Goodyear welted sole, which is really important. And that's something which Loke uh, specialise in, in all reality. So what does Goodyear welted mean? Well, Goodyear welted means that uh, the body of the sole, if you imagine, has a little flap underneath. And all into that flap, the sole is stitched. So in other words, the sole is stitched onto the upper by way of a small flap, and that's called the Goodyear welt. That is the welt which Goodyear welt refers to. Now, the reason why that's important to us is that when the sole wears out, it can be removed, and another sole can be sewn on to that welt. So in, in reality, one pair of uppers can quite easily last five, six, even more different soles. It depends on your wear through rate. The sole is always gonna wear through faster because it's in contact with the ground. You know, it's abrasive substance, the, the, the tarmac or the pavement or wherever you walk. And if, particularly if you have a leather sole shoe, it's gonna wear through much more quickly than the upper is ever gonna wear. And of course, as we love our uppers, as we look after them, we protect them, we nurture them, 
we add material, you know, um, polish and shoe cream to them, they acquire a patina. And we grow to love that patina. We treasure it and value it. So that when the sole wears out, the last thing you want to do is to get a brand new pair of uppers and have to start that patination process all over again. So the beauty of it is you can take your shoes in, they can have a new sole, and your upper remains the same. So that's the importance around Goodyear Welted. And whilst I'm holding this one in my hand, I'm gonna flip it over and just bring your attention to that sole. Now this is a day-night sole. Um, well, I say day-night, it's the look version of a day-night sole. Day-night uh, is a British company, again, which manufactures um, these rubber composite soles. And you know, you'll know you notice if you've got a day-night one, it'll say day-night on it. This is Loke, it's Loke's version of day-night, uh, which means that as you can see, it's got this nippled effect underneath on a rubber style or composite sole. And you can see the stitching line running around the sole. That is where that day-night sole is attached to that Goodyear welt underneath the shoe itself, the upper. And that's what gives its, uh, its, its adhesion and its you know, uh, integrity with the shoe. Now, what's the benefit of day-night? Well, the Birkdale sole, uh, shoe rather, comes only in this day-night sole. Now, I like day-night personally. Um, the options you tend to get are either a day-night sole or you will get a leather sole. People sometimes prefer leather because it's lower profile. It has a slightly more formal look to it, to some people. However, residing in the UK, as I do, it's necessary for me to think about the environment in which I live. And for 50% of the year, the UK, the sort of autumn and winter time, uh, it's quite often wet. It's quite often a cold and damp environment. And the rubber sole is great because it gives you traction when it's wet and slippery. It gives durability. I would say that a day-night sole lasts on average three times longer than an equivalent leather sole. So you're getting much more longevity out of that sole as well. Uh, and it gives you much more confidence when you're walking around. And to be honest, for no greater um, oh, am I still in focus there? For no greater uh, cost and for no greater profile to the shoe. As you can see, the shoe is still quite low profiled. I would say it can still quite easily be worn in formal environments with no trouble whatsoever. So yeah, a really good addition to the sole. Now the broguing, as you can see, it's a wingtip um, brogue on these shoes. Wingtip meaning the shape of the broguing, which goes all the way around the shoe, and then with broguing on the medallion as well. As you can see, I've brought this shoe up to a slight uh, mirror shine, which gives it a lovely finish. And you can see that patination I talked about starting to form where I've added a little bit of color to the, the medallion, the front part of the shoe, um, where it's darkened slightly, and I quite like that patination effect. Um, these shoes are available in a number of different colours. This is the colour which is referred to as Conquer Brown, uh, which I like. It's quite a deep sort of chestnut colour. As you can see, I've only owned these about three months. They haven't had much polishing or shoe cream added to them, and they're already taking on a rather lovely patina. So I, I anticipate they're going to look great as time goes on. They have a slight russet or reddy colour to them, uh, which I favour. I really do like uh, you know, ox blood. It's not so much red, but it's certainly got a slightly different colour to your traditional brown, which I think lends a great deal of character to them. If the brown is not your colour of choice, um, I will just move that to one side and show you that they're also available in a black because I loved them so much when I bought the browns that I decided uh, to go ahead and treat myself to a pair of the black pair as well. Because, you know, these obviously go pretty much everything in a gentleman's wardrobe. And even though the, the Derby style lacing system, most people will suggest that a Derby is less formal than the Oxford. And I would agree with that. But then these, you know, these modern times in which we live, the vast majority of people are not going to know the difference between a Derby style shoe and an Oxford laced shoe. So I wouldn't get too worried or, you know, anal about wearing shoes which have certain lacing systems. It is merely a matter of choosing a shoe which fits the situation that you find yourself in. Black, of course, goes great with pretty much all different clothing colours. Um, the, the conquer colour or the chestnut colour is going to look great with perhaps more casual clothing like chinos, uh, but it's also going to look great 
with perhaps your your lighter grey uh, suits perhaps or uh, you know grey flannel trousers it's just got you know quite a bit of versatility on the brown the black a little bit more formal a little bit more classic can be worn with a lot more things uh, and the 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 broguing i think Again, people will suggest that broguing really reduces the formality level of a pair of shoes. I would agree to that. There is nothing more formal, perhaps, than a plain black cap to Oxford. However, I think the broguing really adds character, lends a bit of interest to any shoe, and just makes it look that little bit more purposeful and individual. You know, particularly if you, you know, bring it up to a mirror shine or add some patination to it. It's all about making that shoe work for you and look good with your personal style. Um, so yeah, they also come in fact in a brown grain colour, which I didn't buy, I've only gone for these two, a brown grain colour which is more of a traditional um, middle to darker brown colour. I'll throw an image of it up here for you. And also they're also available in a brown suede if you want perhaps to wear the shoe in more of the summer environment. I think suede looks great in the summer um, with your chinos and you know your other perhaps summer linen suits, whereas perhaps the, the leathers and particularly the shiny leathers uh, can give a bit of overkill to perhaps those more casual summer clothes. Now one of the advantages, uh, it's worth mentioning when you buy um, a Goodyear welted sole is the fact that the sole can be replaced. And of course you can take it into your local cobblers and see if they can do it for you. But one of the great advantages of buying from Loke is that you can send your shoe back to the factory and they will do a factory refinishing on that sole. They will remove the sole, they will remove your day-night sole, they will remove the heel, and they will do that for between 90 and 105 pounds, depending on the style of shoe that you've got. Now this being an, an 1880 um, export grade shoe, that would be 105 pounds for this pair of um, uh, Loke Birkdales to have that sole replaced. But not only do they replace the sole, they replace the heel, they put a new pair of laces in, and they will refinish the upper as well. And I know this service is very well regarded by people who have used it, the shoe comes back in a virtually as new condition, as you can imagine. It goes back on its original last and it will be reformed back into its you know, absolute perfect state uh, and for £105, which is almost like getting a brand new pair of shoes. So I think it's worth considering that when you buy these because you're not only buying you know, the shoe that you have now, but it's this shoe with, you know, in perpetuity really, as however many times you want to have a new sole added to it. Now I'm sure you want to know the cost because that's an important thing. And that is a great thing when it comes to Loke shoes. The price point. Now you get, I haven't even mentioned the leather, it's a lovely calf skin leather. So good quality leather, as you can see, holds that polish, holds the shine beautifully well. As, as you can imagine, lovely, easy to work on as well. I have to say I've applied a mirror shine to many, many pairs of shoes over the years and it goes on an absolute dream onto the Loke. So that, that, uh, that, that leather just receives it so well, the calfskin leather. You'd expect these to be perhaps prohibitively expensive because of their finish and their quality. Truth is, not the case. Because it's Loke, because they sort of manufacture in fairly large numbers, and they have great many outlets, um, you get the economy of scale. And brand new, these shoes cost £285 a pair. Now, I think that's an entirely reasonable price point for a pair of shoes. However, I would never pay it because I always set myself the goal never to pay full retail for any shoes in my collection. And I have to say, I've achieved that with these two pairs of Loke Birkdale Brogues that I've purchased. £285 brand new. Um, you can buy them today. They're still in the catalogue. They're relatively new in the catalogue. I think only about a year in the Loke catalogue at the moment. So they're likely to be there for a while. Uh, £285. I believe the suede shoe is slightly less at £245 because hence, you know, obviously the different material involved in the manufacture. However, look around, shop around, you will get them discounted. I mean, even if you look on the Loke website from time to time, you know, the annual uh, Christmas sales and so on, when I look quite recently, you know, they were um, savagely reduced in price because at the last time I looked, it was around about Christmas time. Uh, but I picked these two pairs of shoes up from eBay. Brand new, unworn. Uh, as you can see, the soles, I've only actually worn this black pair once. 
um, and the brown I've probably only worn a few times so a few little blemishes underneath but hardly anything at all but they were brand new when I purchased them unworn in the box with all of the look accoutrement you know the shoe bags everything that you get with a brand new pair uh, and I bought them from a guy I've bought from several times on eBay who I can only imagine has some sort of uh, connection to look because he often has top quality looks at much reduced prices. I bought the brown pair, which was the first pair I bought for £110. And the black pair I bought some weeks later, but after I discovered I really liked the brown pair, and I paid £91 for these shoes. So all up price, 285 Me, I bought both of these shoes for considerably less brand new than one pair that I could have got from the look website. I make mention of the cost only to show to you you don't have to pay full price and you can get a remarkable shoe for £91. I mean you could pay more for fashion shoes which quite frankly will deliver nothing like the quality, nothing like the comfort, nothing like the leather and the finish that you'll be able to achieve from these look Birktails. So there we go. That's the look Birktail in all its glory, a great good quality gentleman's brogue. So there we go, that was the Loke Birkdale brogue. I have to say, they've been on my feet now for three months and they've been performing you know, way above the price point which they come into the marketplace. So well worth considering if you're looking for a shoe in that category. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this review today. If you have, please feel free to give us a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel? That way you won't miss any of our future material, which is often about shoes often about shaving, apparel, accoutrement, things like that as well. So, you know, subscribe to us, join our community and benefit from our uh, joint endeavours as we go forward towards being the best chaps that we can be. So until the next time, take care of yourselves with comfortable and shiny shoes and I'll see you again very soon. <laughs>